You probably know that writing hyphen plus space creates a bullet point and that greater than plus space creates a toggle. But there is many more things that we can learn to make our usage of Notion more productive. So in this video, I'm going to show you my top 15 tips to increase our productivity in Notion. And I'm going to separate them into tips for increasing our productivity, for helping organize our Notion better, and for making it look prettier. Let's get into it. So productivity, tip number one, keyboard shortcuts. One keyboard shortcut that I love is Command Alt plus any of the numbers. You can play with it. Command Alt one for header one, two for header two, three for header three, four, four checkbox, five bullet point, six number list, seven toggle, eight code, and nine page. Another one that I use all the time is Command Enter whenever I'm in a toggle to open and close the toggle, or if I'm in a checkbox block to check it. Another one that I use all the time is Command Shift M, and I use this to create a new Notion window. My use case normally is to create the same window and put them side by side. Like this, I can work at different points of the same page. And finally, one of the things that I love about Notion is how customizable it is. I love to color text, but sometimes I'm coloring this text multiple times. So I always use Command Shift H to color the text in the same way that I did previously. Tip number two, setting up Save to Notion. Save to Notion is a Chrome extension that allows you to capture everything on the web very easily by using automated forms. So let's say that I want to save this book over here. I will go to Save to Notion, to the form that I have already created that is linked to my books database, and he is going to already catch the name of the book. I'm just going to select which is the topic and the status of it to process and add a new page. And this is automatically going to go to my Notion. I don't have to copy and paste. And I think that because of the forms, this is much better than the official Notion extension. Tip number three, using parallel linked databases. I don't know if you know this, but if we put two databases, one parallel to the other, we can still drag things from one to the other. And I find this extremely helpful for when we have to schedule something because on the right, we can have the calendar view and on the left, the things that we want to schedule. So whenever we are going to drag something from the left, to the right, the due date is going to be updated. I find that this saves me a ton of time. This is so much better than going into here and selecting the due date manually, because here I lose track of what I have already scheduled. The fourth tip is to use reminder the fast way. Even if I don't love the reminders in Notion, they can be quite helpful and we can invoke them just by typing at rem. We don't even have to write remind. And then let's say that I want to be reminded tomorrow of my mom's birthday. So I will just write tum. Again, we don't have to finish the word, 9 a.m. And that is it. I'm gonna be reminded tomorrow about this. If I wanna change it, I will just click here and select any other time. So this was to show you that just by using the keyboard, we can completely do this because Notion can understand what we write. The fifth tip is to use sync blocks smartly. So we can use SimBlocks to modify a database template even after we have run the template. So let's say that we have our meeting and notes database and because we are very organized, we like to create the meeting notes notes in advance because we want to set up which is gonna be our goal for the call. But now, if I wanna change these rules for a good meeting within my template, if I change it within the template, that will not be changed in the note that I have already created. So the way that I can solve this is by putting whatever I may need to update in the future within a sync block. And now I can even copy this block and put it somewhere outside. So like this, even if I create a new note that I have already written my goals here or the agenda of the call or whatever. So let's say that I have spent already a lot of time. So now if I wanna change this, I don't have to delete all the data and run the template again. I can just change it from here. And here we have it, already changed. The sixth tip is to use toggles, because toggles will allow us to hide all the necessary information that we don't need to be seeing all the time. So for example, this is my backlog of all the databases that I have, but it's super neat. But if I open all these toggles, then I will be able to see all the different databases that I have. But like this, I can have a bird's eye view of all the different databases that I have without cluttering my view. The seventh tip, if you wanna go a little bit deeper into toggles, is to create columns within toggles. Because let's be clear, one of the fantastic features of Notion is that you can create columns like these ones. 
But if we really like to maintain everything neat within our workspace, we may find that within a toggle, we cannot really create columns. You see, because this will create a column outside of the toggle and this will defeat the whole purpose. So the way that we can do it is by creating one page. The name doesn't matter. We go back and now let's put this text within the page. Within this page, we are going to create the column and then we are going to go back and just turn this page into text. And voila, we have the two columns. We can just remove this text and that is it. We have the two columns within the toggle. The eighth tip is going to be to have some hierarchy because I feel that without this, my notion will be super, super messy. So I love to have an HQ page. This is how I call it. And this is like the root directory of everything that is within Notion. And it doesn't matter how deep I go into my Notion, that I will always be able to find my way back to the homepage using the breadcrumbs. So this adds a lot of structure. The ninth tip is to create mobile-friendly pages. Because let's be honest, Notion in mobile is not very good. So if we find that some page we use often in our cell phone, let's make it mobile-friendly. So for example, I have created this page over here to add a new task just with this view. And this is very mobile friendly. If I want to add a new task from my phone, I will just come here and add it. There is no columns and there is nothing that on mobile will not be displayed correctly. The 10th tip is to use linking blocks. If you create workflows within Notion and every time that you finish a part of the workflow, you always have to go to some of the page to continue. You can save time and create a link block for that. So let's say that in my workflow, whenever I have finished creating subtasks for one of my videos, which is this example, I have to go back to scheduling my YouTube videos. So I have created this link over here that brings me exactly to this part of my workflow, where is where I schedule my videos. So how have I done that? If we click in these six dots, we can see that here there is the option of copy link and we are going to be copying the link to this specific block. Once this is copied, we can go to whatever part of the workflow we need to link this step to and we can just select the text that we want it to be the link, select link and copy the link to the block. You see here link to block. And that is it. Now, whenever I click here, I'm going to go back to this block. The 11th tip is going to be to change the color efficiently. You probably know that if we want to change the color of the text, we have to come here, go to color and change the color of the text. And now let's say that we are lazy and we want to do it faster. So if I want to color this one yellow, I will just write slash yellow and hit enter. And that is it. I can also do that for background color background yellow. As you can see, you don't even have to finish writing and that's it. This is a much faster way to change colors. The 12th tip is to use emojis. And even if this may sound a little bit strange, when we use emojis in titles, for example, this gives a much more aesthetic view to our pages. But how to include them fast in Notion? I don't know if you know this, but if we write column and start writing the emoji that we want to find, let's say it's a fish. Here we have all the fish emojis. We just press enter and that's it. The third thing tip is going to be to use Unsplash for images. You may be familiar with using Unsplash from the cover section over here. Unsplash is like a Google images, but for images free of rights. I don't know if you knew that you can actually embed Unsplash images from here. And the way that I did it is just by writing slash IMA, enter and selecting Unsplash. And here we have it. The fourth tip is to use icons for all the pages that you create and that are going to be visible in some dashboard. Because whenever we create a new page, Notion's icon is quite ugly. So I'm going to share with you the two sources where I get the most icons from. The first one is flat icon that has ton of icons that we can use in Notion. And the second one is notioniconswebsite where we can even change the opacity, make them look great for dark mode and just by Clicking on them, we're going to copy it into our clipboard. And if we go to Notion, we just have to paste here the link. That's it. The 15th tip is going to be to color code our pages. Let's take a look at this page. You can see how I have matched the color of the titles here with the emojis. And like this, it is going to be much more pleasing to the eye and better organized. If you like this video, I'm sure you will love this video over here in which I show 17 tips for making your Notion even more aesthetic. So I hope these tips were useful and as always, hasta la próxima.